Hey everybody, how you doing? Techie 101 here, and I want to wish you a very happy Shanksgiving today. You know, not many people know the history of Shanksgiving. You know, I forgot to mention it last time I did this, you know, in 2018. So let me let me lay some uh, news on you here. Okay, some big news. Shanks was the first ginger. I think most of us are already aware of that. All gingers from a modern day perspective are descended from him. Um, that's why most of them do not have souls because they, you know, Shanks absorbed all of them into himself. And that's the reason he became a god figure after he died. We all know this. This is in standard textbooks. Any school will tell you this much. Um, but what you did not know is that the world was actually incredibly boring before Shanks came. There was no fighting, there was no booze, there were nobody, there was nobody playing games or anything. It was just a bunch of people sitting around staring at the sky. And then Shanks showed up and said, my god this is boring, and introduced swords and games and booze to the population. And uh, you know, that was about like, I don't know, 50,000 years ago, and here we are now, and happy Shanksgiving to all. Okay, so today's Shanksgiving, I wanted to focus a little bit on Shanks's sword, Griffin which we actually found out the name of a few SBS's ago. This was revealed. Not revealed in the story yet because Shanks is so awesome, he has yet to actually swing this sword in actual combat. He's only used it to clash with Whitebeard, which was more of just a friendly jostling. You know, that was more of a god fighting against a deity there. Um, I'll let you decide which is which. And then you had um, at Marineford, you know, when Akainu was going to finish off Kobe, like, you damn pink-haired brat! And then, you know, pink is not the same thing as red, but close enough enough, Shanks stands up for his own. So he steps in and he takes out Griffin and he blocks Aki Inu's blast with it, alright? So, um, mentioned Griffin before. Pretty damn sweet sword. Pretty big sword, honestly, and considering the fact Shanks only has, uh, you know, one arm now. You know, he used to have two. Well, he used to have six, but he dialed it down to two, and now he only has one. Uh, he still swings this giant sword with the utmost power and energy and hockey infused into this damn thing. Now, here is something I wanted to bring up, okay? Um, as, as something new perspective to throw out you here. Um, was Griffin Goldie Rogers sword? Now you might be thinking, okay, why did you why did you mention that? That seems like a random thing to say. Ah, no, 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 no. I got evidence to show you. I'm just throwing it out there. Like, how do you feel about that? We know that Shanks got his straw hat from Goldie Roger. I'm not really sure. Well, Goldie Roger picked up the straw hat. It might have just been his from birth. He might have just bought it somewhere, or he might have got it from somebody else. I don't know. But we know he got the straw hat from Roger. But the sword. The sword is interesting. Now, this is what the sword looks like right now in the manga and in the anime. It has a very distinctive kind of guard around the hilt, okay? And uh, we see him using a sword, Roger. We see Roger using a sword in Strong World. In fact, this is like the, really the only thing we get to see of Roger battle-wise. I'm hoping in this flashback right now that we're getting with Odin and Whitebeard and eventually Roger, we get to see at least a little bit, just a little bit about how Roger actually fights. <laughs> That's the funny thing. You know, he's he's king of the pirates, Goldie Roger. We do not know how he was so badass. We understand part of it, like a good 82% of it was the mustache, but how does he actually fight, right? We saw in Strong World when he was going up against Shiki, which that didn't even make any sense because it was his ship against like 50 in this stormy weather of the uh, the Battle of the Ed War. And, and Roger's just like, all right, mateys, let's do this. And he takes out his sword and he takes a pistol, like a flintlock, like a regular pistol and it just YARG! And then a storm came in and swept everybody away. So, right, that that's all we got, though. That's literally all we got. In Stampede, I was really excited when I read the spoilers for Stampede, because in the in the uh, spoilers, it talked about how Roger was, like, the only person to defeat Bullet. Like, Bullet was this super muscular dude, like, muscles so powerful, they have, like, their own gravitational pull. You know, even Buggy stated that Bullet might even be stronger than Silver's Rayleigh, right? So it's like, whoa, this guy's super buff right? And Roger was like the only person to ever defeat him and they had that whole backstory with Bullet in the movie like growing up in this war-torn country. Bullet defeated an entire enemy army and ended like a decade-long war by himself at like age 10. All right, he was like he was like a like a super soldier. Like, you know, the Captain America serum tested on like a 10-year-old. All right, times like 5. Okay? Um so, yeah, that was Bullet and Roger was able to beat him, so I was really excited to finally see the movie to see See, like anything about like that they, they it didn't even have to show the whole fight it could have just showed like Roger holding bullet and like you know like like pinning him to the ground you know putting him in like an arm lock or something or like a headlock or something like come on bullet say uncle say uncle I'm your uncle right 
And, you know, you know I, we didn't even get that, though. We didn't even get that. In the movie, it was just Roger just kind of standing on the deck of the Oro Jackson and Bullet just hits the ground and just being like, oh, oh he's, his mustache, it happened so fast. We don't get anything, right? So all we got to go on is he uses a sword. Now, here's the kicker. The sword that we see right here in the animated version of Strong World looks a little bit different than the sword we see here in the manga of Strong World. Here, it's very clearly not the same sword as Griffin. The hilt, the guard, that all looks different. In the manga, what does it look like? Well, we don't actually get to see the full sword in the manga. The panel's like cut off at a certain angle, but we do get to see that the guard does indeed resemble Griffin. Now, going along with this logic, we also get to see Shanks and his sword in the manga, and we also get to see, once again, the sword is not in its entire view here, but we get to see the guard, and the guard is once again similar to Griffin. But I would argue, considering Shanks is at the tender age of 12 in this backstory, because uh, the Battle of Ed Ward took place 27 years ago, and Shanks is 39 right now, so... I know, <laughs> right? Like 12 years old and already going up against Shiki the Golden Lion on Roger's crew. I want to know the circumstances of how Shanks even ended up there, but okay. Uh, or Buggy. Like, like I would imagine Shanks and Buggy, they're from the same place. Or I guess, well, no, because Shanks is from the West Blue and Buggy was born on the Grand Line, so I guess they could have met each other at some point. Maybe they just ran into each other on Roger's crew. That's when they first met, but um, I, they're like the same age, so I was expecting them to have like a, like a childhood together, but I guess that can't be the case there because Shanks definitely comes from the West and I know Buggy was born in the Grand Line, but what are you going to do? So anyway, um... We look at these side-by-side -side comparisons, though, and I'm going to say that the sword that Shanks had when he was this age was not the same, was not, was not Griffin. Because Griffin is, like, a really long sword, all right? And for, like, a 12-year-old kid to wield, I mean, that might be a little bit unwildly there, you know? Um, I mean, and Zoro went through a, a bunch of katanas by the time he finally got to his current, you know, uh, set out of, you know, Enma, the Sandai Kotetsu, and Wadoichi Monji, um, you know? So it, it's not impossible to think that Shanks just really preferred that kind of style of blade. Or maybe, for example, he saw Roger use that kind of sword, and so Shanks wanted to use, like, I want to use the same kind of sword you use, Roger, and Roger's like, I matey, well, here you go for your 12th birthday. He gives him, like, a tiny sword that has, like, the same kind of guard, but it's a little smaller, so he can actually wield it at his young age, right? Um, and then, when he gets a little older here, at, like, age 15, I think it was, uh, yeah, it was, so it was 25 years ago when they found Laugh Tale, and then they, they separated, so that would have been 14. Shanks would have been 14 at that point, the last time he really got to see Roger, because after Roger disbanded the crew, they all went their separate ways. Roger turned himself into the Marines. Uh, Roger did have some time in the Impel Down where he talked to Garp and everybody, um, but beyond that, Shanks didn't get to see him until his execution at Logtown 24 years ago when he was 15. So, I... I, I kind of want to see that, too. In fact, I think we're definitely going to see that, the moment in the story. Um... Where And we don't even need to see Laugh Tale first. We could skip over that. We could have just the moment where Roger gathers his crew together after leaving Laugh Tale and decides to disband it. He's just like, Me hearties, we just finished the most epic adventure that ever did adventure in the history of pirating adventures. And they all pile back some rum and they're all like, Yeah, Captain, what's next? I now... I'm breaking up the band. All right, everybody, get out of here. Go away. I don't care where you go, but you can't stay here. And he just, like, crashes the booze on the ground. And is like, wait, wait, what? Huh? Why? <laughs> and, of course, Roger, Roger, you know, he had the disease. And everybody on the crew kind of knew he had a disease. So I'm sure they would kind of in indicate where they were going. Like, they, I'm pretty sure they all knew that was going to be their last voyage, you know. Maybe the younger members, like Buggy and Shanks, were kind of like, because they're young. And they're just like, oh, man, this is great journeying with Roger. This is going to be fun. We're going to do this for years years um you know because the younger you are the further away you think about death and stuff but i think all the older men on the crew like you know uh, crocus definitely
definitely because he was the doctor of Roger, but also, um, you know, Rayleigh and uh, Seagull, you know, Seagull, Scopper Gabon, uh, who's possibly Denjiro, who's possibly Koshiro, who's possibly this guy, whatever, what have you. They all kind of knew, like, yeah, this was Roger's swan song. This was going to be, he found Laugh Tale, we found the One Piece, we did all that. Um, we, we know we're not going to continue journeying much longer. We could, I mean, they could keep going. They could keep going and kind of ride on this wave of, like, Roger's the king of the pirates and this fame and this infamy in the world. But I think they all would have known how that would have ended. It would have ended with probably, honestly, Roger passing out on some island and then just probably dying in his deathbed. You know, and that's not a bad way to go out, dying surrounded by all the people that love you and everything. Um, you know, like Rayleigh and uh, Shanks and Buggy and everybody that, you know, that was his family. That was Roger's family, basically. But I think Roger, for whatever, I mean, uh, yeah, Roger, for whatever reason, he didn't want to go out like that. He wanted to go out in a much more grandiose fashion. So he's like, I I'm going to go out with an audience, right? So he disbands the crew a year before his execution. So they have time to get away from the new world and they have time to set up locations and other, like Rayleigh goes to Sabaody and shacks up with Shocky, <laughs> you know, and, you know, we don't know where Scoffer's at. Rayleigh and, B I mean, uh, uh, Buggy and Shanks, they kind of go their separate ways at Logtown. Shanks does ask Buggy, like, join my crew. I'm starting a crew, which by the way, I'm wondering if Buggy is really regretting that life choice right about now. It's kind of like how if you get offered like the deal of a lifetime, it's like, hey, you know, do you want to work for this company? Company, you know, and it's like, nah, I'm sorry, I'm gonna turn it down. And then, like, if, if you would have joined that company, it would have been like this, it would have been like a Fortune 500 company. It was like Microsoft or some shit. You know, it's like, damn it, I really should have joined that company. You know, like, so maybe Buggy has that idea now. He's like, screw you, Shanks. I'm not gonna join your stupid crew full of stupid people with your stupid hair and your stupid swords. I'm gonna go my own way and start my crew filled with a bunch of clowns and mimes. That's how real pirates let's get it done. Um, and then, you know, cut to like 24 years later when Shanks is a Yonko and Buggy's in the East Blue, like, hmm. You know, he's reading all the exploits of Shanks and it's like, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. He's like, what's wrong, Captain Buggy? Nothing's wrong! Screw you! Load up the buggy ball! We're gonna take over a random village in the East Blue and we're gonna rule it and I'm gonna be awesome. And I could get in the newspaper. I'm buggy. I got a bounty of 15 million. <laughs> Meanwhile, Shanks bounty 4 billion plus. So I think, I think, maybe that's where honestly a lot of the animosity comes from. Maybe it's mostly just jealousy. <laughs> you know, it's just like, you know, they, because Shanks and buggy, they have a good back and forth, but yeah. What was I talking about again? Oh yeah, Griffin. Okay, cool. So, and it's not impossible that before the crew disbanded, you know, Roger might have called each and every member up to him and, you know, given maybe something, maybe not necessarily an object, but maybe just words of wisdom or, like, parting words. I don't think it was, uh, maybe it was. Maybe it was just, like, I'm breaking up the crew and then everybody get off the Oro Jackson. Where did they put the Oro Jackson? That's another one. But I'm not gonna go into that tangent. But it's like every crew member goes up to Roger and talks to them before they leave. You know, like, thank you, Roger, for this amazing experience. You know, it's amazing. Um, and then when Shanks went to go talk to him, because Shanks already had his straw hat at this point. We see that during the Battle of Ed War. So Roger already gave Shanks a straw hat long before the crew disbanded. Um, and so Roger's last words to Shanks might have been something like, Shanks, I feel it. You know, you're going to guide that hat to where it needs to be in the world. Um, you, you're going to do great things, kid, you know, just keep, you know, just, just keep being awesome. And maybe it's just like one of those, like that mean, gr uh, mean Joe Green, you know, Super Bowl commercial where it's like, hey, kid, Shanks turns back and, you know, Roger just tosses him Griffin and just, really, sir? He's like, don't poke your eye out, kid. Shanks is like, and they just, and he just goes away and then they, they leave and then he has Griffin and he trains with it and becomes one of the greatest swordsmen in the entire world, eventually clashes with Mihawk, okay? Um, I mean, like, Shanks is an awesome swordsman regardless, so there's any number of other places he could have gotten his hands on this sword. You know, like, where does anybody get their awesome swords? You know, where did Mihawk get Yoru, for instance? Like, did he just, I mean, is it a fairly, a family heirloom or did he just buy it from somewhere or did he make it himself? You know, like... Like, that's questions abound there, but considering the fact that Griffin is most likely, it's easily an Owazimono, I'm gonna say it's probably a Saijo, though. Just because we're already revealing we had Whitebeard's uh, Cloud Cutter, that was a Saijo, 
I'm gonna assume all the Yonko, maybe even Napoleon, even maybe even Big Mom's Blade being a Saijou, I would not be upset about that in the slightest. Um, now, Kaido uses a Kanombo. He uses a club. Now, the, the blades, the Mato ranks, they don't necessarily have to be Katanas. They can be Spears. They can be Rapiers, like with Cavendish's Blade. Um, they could be like Shodachis. They don't have to be Katanas necessarily. But in the case with Kaido, his is not even a bladed weapon at all. It's a blunt weapon. It's a, it's a well, he has little spikes coming out of it, but it's mostly, it's a Kanombo. It's a club. So I'm not going to say that is a Mato rank, okay? Uh, but maybe Orochi. Orochi might have a sword in Wano that he took from the previous Shogun. That blade might be a Saijo. I could definitely see that. But in the case, yeah, with Griffin, I'm going to say, yeah, he's a Yonko. If there's anybody in the world that deserves to have the Saijo blades right now in the story, you got Mihawk, the greatest swordsman in the world. He obviously has to have one. Whitebeard, previous Yonko, and Shanks, current Yonko, also having one. So, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go with that headcanon right now until we learn otherwise. And also, keep in mind, like, I don't know if Oda's even gonna go down that road with it. I don't even know if Oda's gonna get to the point where he's gonna be like, this is where Mihawk got his blade. This is where Whitebeard got his, uh, Bicento. This is the origin of Shanks' Griffin. I don't even think, cause that's like going into a lot of detail there. I mean, we already had Zoro's origin of his blades, cause he's like a main character, so that makes sense. But going beyond that, uh, you know, I don't think we'll ever find that out. So if we never find it out in the story, yeah, headcanon is that Roger did it. Or rather, we'd have to wait until next time we do see Roger actually fighting or the first time we actually get to see Roger actually fighting and uh because this was in you know strong world this was a while ago and this was kind of like a special chapter still considered canon you know, it's right here see still still considered canon and all that but it would have been nice to see it right now in the actual storyline in a flashback. And if he pulls out a blade that's like a long sword with a certain guard and everything, even if it's not actually stated to be called Griffin, um, if he pulls out a sword like that, I'd be like, all right, I'm happy with this. Even if it's a different sword, I would still roll with that, okay? So yeah, that's the video. Uh, a little bit more on the shorter side, I understand that. But it is it is Thanksgiving, you know, it's a holiday, so I think I'll take a half day here. Um, you might notice that there's no berry over here. Barry was replaced with a water bottle. No, no, no. Okay, so here's the deal. I was uh, reviewing Barry's contract, right? You know, see where he's going from here. And it turns out um, a number of things, actually. First off, uh, did you guys know it's frowned upon to make uh, somebody, a, a brick or person or otherwise, uh, work for seven days a week with only giving like one day off a month. Yeah, that turns out that's frowned upon in most circles. So Barry kind of got a lawsuit on me there and uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's going to be pending right now. I can't really talk much about that, but it turns out that I have to, uh, by law, extend his contract to an entire year while also giving him weekends and holidays off. Also, I have to bump up his pay. Now, my rebuttal to this was that he was a damn brick, but the lawyers just really wouldn't budge on this. So, Barry is now making six Hershey bars and five Kit Kats an hour, whereas I'm stuck with only, what, like, like one Twix bar every day or something like that. So, he's making way more than me now, and he's getting more days off than I am. So, um, yeah, but uh, his contract has been renewed, but he's taking the day off right now, spending time with his family. Yeah, I'll give you that image in your head. You know, his family. His, his mother is, of course, a cube. His dad is a cylinder. His grandfather is a uh, trapezoid, which is a two-dimensional figure. But, you know, they still... It's a weird family, I admit. But, hey, they make it work. So, yeah, they're doing that. So, he'll probably be back tomorrow for the review. But, uh, I, guy, I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. Happy Thanksgiving to all. Spend it with your family and uh, dye your hair red. Uh, my hair is, of course, dyed red right now, but I can't take off the caps because it's Thanksgiving. But, yeah, uh, have a great day, everybody. Teching101, signing out.